Napoleon. You certainly don't look like a blood-crazed revolutionary. The hood is a bit sinister, though, if you don't mind my saying. It's no secret that we have a, a list of the most interesting pivotal moments in, in history, and you know, if we could, we would do them all. But one thing's for sure, at least in my book, is that. Uh, AC is about being an assassin, it's about the fantasy of being there and stalking your prey and being smarter than your enemies. Early on in the project, we decided to make a game that was about a character and not about the French Revolution. And then the story really becomes uh, a story about the dangers of, uh, of believing blindly in one cause, uh, be it one or the other, right? And uh, you get a real good exposition of both the Assassins and the Templars and how both of these fashion, factions, uh, at one point, could have pre prevented a lot of uh, uh, the bad things that happened in the French Revolution if they had just joined together. But because of these ideals, this fanaticism, they, it actually keeps them spread apart and it actually doesn't help the people. Our new assassin, uh, is uh, his motivation is, is one of redemption, first of all. Because of a, a tragic event in his life, Arnaud is essentially raised by uh, a Templar, uh, Templar Grand Master. And uh, he actually bef befriends the Templar's daughter, Elise. They grow up together. That man, uh, François de la Serre, gets murdered. And essentially, Arnaud feels responsible for the murder of de la Serre. Arnaud decides to embark on a, a, a quest to stop whoever murdered um, de la Serre. Yes, we're coming back to the Assassin versus Templar storyline. It's there, it's in the background, but we're in reintroducing it. We've, we've um, purposely um, you know, prevented ourselves from, from delivering too much or overexposing too much of that storyline. And we want people, to, we want to bring back a little bit of the mystery of it. The years our game pretty much covers is 1789 through 1795 about, which is when the main French Revolution happens. I mean, there were things leading up, but the fall of the Bastille is generally considered like, okay, that's, that's the seminal moment where the people are really asserting themselves. Our game starts a little bit before that because there were some important things that happened before that, but that kind of really starts all the ac action going. The country was ruled by the monarchy. The monarchy, they knew how to spend money, they didn't know how to make money, so the country was essentially broke. Uh, people were dying of hunger, uh, people were sick, Paris was in squalor, and people at one point um, decided to overthrow this corrupt monarchy. They, you know, a, a tipping point was reached where people essentially took up arms and uh, eradicated the monarchy. They killed people, they were beheading people, uh, not only monarchs, not only uh, the monarchy, but even themselves. It, it just, they lost control. Uh, in the French Revolution, it's like, well, whose side do you want to be on? There's kind of the crazy people who want to chop everybody's heads off, and then there's the slightly less crazy people who want to chop most people's heads off. The story we've come up with is the Assassins and the Templars themselves are going through kind of evolutions, and they themselves are trying to figure out the direction where they want their organizations to go. And uh, there's, there's a disagreement within both of those camps. And that's playing out in the middle of this maelstrom of a revolution uh, where they've got to like lend their support here or there as they think is going to advance their own interests. Uh, on top of that, you have Arnaud and his personal story. He is also going through a character development uh, and having to work that in with the backdrop of all these giant events uh, swirling about him. Turns out that there was sort of um internal strife, a uh, civil war within the Templars. And whoever took control of the Templars has decided to do so by killing the Grand Master and, and shifting gears and, and turning the Templars in a new direction that might be dangerous for the world. So uh, this is the sort of quest Arno embarks on. And as he's sort of investigating this and discovering who was implicated, he starts finding different targets, different Templar targets, going up and up in the chain until he discovers who this uh, who this murky sort of new Grand Master is. To your health, gentlemen. You boy, stop! So having this rich, dense urban setting is the perfect environment to uh, to play out that fantasy. And also because we took a break from it, I think it's kind of cool to uh, to reintroduce it using like the the modern technologies and next gen uh, graphical power and also. Uh, being able to, to have even more crowds, more people, more interactions with the, with the characters. Uh, I think people are 
be going to be happily surprised to, to, to be going back to that kind of fantasy. First, we did a lot of research uh, on the paintings of the era because it depicts in a good way, in a very descriptive way, and very personal way, uh, what the era was about, uh, what's the fashion of, of the era, the architectural style, what's the type, uh, the type of characters that lived uh, during this, this period. And then after that, we went deeply in, into the uh, written descriptions, whether it's through uh, historical writings or uh, some stories that, that will be written for the era, historical stories. With the city of Paris, we had a great opportunity because as we researched it, there's just so many personalities and events and just there's no way we could get all of that in the main story. But th this way, every single little open world activity you do has some hook into actual historical events. You have a lot of different factions. You have sort of royalists at the beginning, revolutionaries, then you have moderates, extremists. And to us, that gives us the idea, what if you could actually manipulate those factions? What if you could actually use those different factions as, uh, as gameplay elements? And we've actually integrated a lot of those systems directly into the game. So essentially, there's stuff you can do in the city that helps change, uh, and district by district, it helps change the actual fabric of the city, the actual, uh, not the layout, but the, uh, the sort of the NPC uh, ecosystems in these different areas. And that literally changes the way you can play the missions that are set in that district. One thing we've done is we've divided the city into kind of themes. So different neighborhoods will have different them thematic resonances to the sorts of missions that you can, you can choose to go on. To create variety into a city, we relied a lot on stylization and exaggeration. So we read about the different uh, districts of the real Paris and tried to, to gather as much info about what could be unique about this district. And we took this uh, theme or flavor and exaggerated a little bit. What's interesting about Paris is Paris is a vast, flat terrain. And it's broken by huge, massive monuments. So we have these majestic uh, locations and landmarks all over the place. So you have the tall and the shorter buildings. You have a lot of interesting shapes. Uh, but also, there's a lot of duality even within the, the social structure. And that's something that fascinates me about this time period is if you were ultra rich or if you were really poor, there was more of a visual distinction between that. And each of these different districts uh, is sort of a little city on its own, right? It has, not only does it have its own architectural style, it has its own thematics, its own characters, its own types of missions, uh, its own flavor, its own sound, everything. Uh, even down to the, the, the types of songs that are sung in taverns. It's unique to the district. And then <clears throat> we actually added voice. We, our NPCs are just mimed, they didn't talk. Now they're actually, some of them are actually gonna get to talk and hear conversations. And, which is really cool because when you're, for example, you're, you're doing a mission, you're stealthing, you can actually overhear guards and the stuff that they're gonna be talking about is stuff that's related to the mission or maybe they're just their daily lives. It really gives a lot of realism to the game, right? It feels, just feels more realistic. It feels more like a, a real city and not a, a big simulation. Unity, for the first time, we have full-scale buildings. So Notre Dame, the cathedral, it's actually real size. It's huge. It really changes everything. To create Notre Dame has taken me in totally 14 months. Um, I think 10 months for the outside, 4 months for the inside. It was uh, to create uh, more than 3 and 69 unique modules to create the entire Notre Dame. That's the time I take for this. Yeah. It includes all the research, uh, the composition, and debugging to adapt the matrix for the behavior and stuff like this. What was overwhelming for me was seeing uh, statues and all the craftsmanship that went into building this architecture. So for us building this, I, it's a very exciting thing to work on because as artists, we're all about details, we're all about you know, playing with scale, and uh, it's, it's the perfect uh, vernacular to work within. And for us, 
it sets our own challenges as artists to really express this and make it as immersive and uh, as possible for anyone. It's a living city with all kinds of, you know, people that were secondary in the revolution, but they're still very, very interesting. So little tidbits of like, oh, this is how that worked, this is who that was. It's cool when it's uh, murky events because you can, you know, we have our own interpretation, but if the events are too well documented, then essentially it's a, you know, it's a checklist, right? Oh, then, you know, you have to do this, you can't do that because historically that's not what happened. So we, we decided to just keep it in as a backdrop. But throughout that narrative, Arnaud also learns a lot of different lessons, right? Uh, our tagline is history is our playground. One of our core values uh, is, is, you know, uh, having fun with history, being as, uh, as, as true as possible to it, uh, and, and have it uh, be an inspiration for, for us and for, for people ultimately. A lot of times reality is a little underwhelming, but if you help it a little, and this is the magic of, uh, you know, of, of video games, right? You can, you can actually give it a, a little bit of a twist to make it feel more, you know, if there is a message, you can make that message feel more real by, by twisting it and giving it a little bit of an artistic flourish. It's a way for us to, to play with very in interesting and pivotal moments in human history and fusing that with the core fantasy of being an assassin uh, in the, uh, the Assassin Brotherhood. And that's, that's what AC is all about. It's, it's playing with history. Stealth was always one of our core pillars. You have navigation, you have fight, and you have social stealth, right? What we've done now is we've really tried to, to revamp the stealth pillar to make it, first of all, more immersive, second of all, give you more control, and make it more accessible. You have a target, you have a, an objective in the game, and around that we are building opportunities. And all the opportunities are uh, tailed for each play style you can have. So, of course, if you are specialized uh, in combat and you want to, to go in stealth, you can try. If you are good, you can pass, but it will be more difficult. 